Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Rev. Osewusu Kovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We bless the name of our Lord for another opportunity to be at his feet. Please remember that the virus is still around, so do take good care of yourself, and may God richly bless you. Amen. Today, there's a powerful statement Jesus, the scripture made about Christ, and we want to look at it. From Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 8, the scripture says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he is not changing but the same, then it means he can do the same things if we can believe what the apostles and the disciples believe. If only we can trust him, the Bible says we will do greater miracle, greater works. That's how he puts it. In John chapter number 14, verse 12, Jesus said, because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's get to John chapter number 14 and verse number 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the work that I do shall he do also. And greater work, that, greater work than thee shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Amen. You see, Jesus said greater work shall be done by his followers and the apostles and the believers. So how? Yes, greater works. Because we have greater opportunities than him. Hallelujah. So Pastor, how? The truth is that look at the world population now. And how many can we reach with the gospel? And he wants us to reach the whole world with the gospel. Actually, my two chapter number 24 and then verse number 14. I'm laying the foundation before we get into our subject now. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. He wants us to preach the gospel to the ends of the world. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then he has also promised us that if we only believe, greater work shall we do. Hallelujah. We thank him for all these great promises. But then, how are that going to happen? Good. I want you to know the system of Christ is not going on a try run. He said, I will bow my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So if you want to see his methods and plan, go to the example in the New Testament. Hallelujah. He is at work building his church. And we see the example in the New Testament. As we believe and follow these examples, then we shall do greater work. He has called us that we will do the same thing they did. If we can believe like the apostles believed, if we can follow him like they followed him, if we can trust him like they trusted him, then we are going to do the same because Jesus Christ has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. If we have this scripture, then we are, we are, we are set. Praise the Lord. He wants us to do the same way. So let's see his strategies and his system, how he operated them. Mm. First of all, he selected the twelve to be with him so that he may send them out to preach. Amen. He spent some time with them, three and a half years. They were with Christ everywhere. They prayed, they learned, they preached. They did many things. 
But before he left, he said something very profound. He gave them a commission, go ye into the world and preach the gospel to all nations. Whosoever shall believe shall be saved. And so they were committed. They were commissioned to preach the gospel to all nations in the world. Thank God this great commission is still there. That we must preach the gospel. And Jesus made a promise. This gospel shall be preached unto the ends of the world before he come. If we desire that Jesus should return on fire, then we should hasten the gospel preaching. We should hasten and make effort to reach out quickly. But then let's look at his system and his methods. Because he's not on trial run. He's not just making an experiment. Whether it will work, no. But the scripture says something. I want us to look at this scripture. Very interesting. At Ephesians chapter number 2 and then verse number 20. Ephesians 2, 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostle and prophet. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. So we see even the foundation is laid already. So we are to build on the foundation of the apostles and the prophet. We, Jesus has no new plan for us. He has the same old plan he used in the New Testament. His plan was simply this. He called the people to be with him. He trained and equipped them and then he sent them out. But before they go out, he now gave them instruction. Because I am going to the Father, go and wait for the promise of the Father until you be endued with power from on high. Until the Holy Ghost come upon you, you do not go out. Mm. Hallelujah. But so we should go. Yes, he said, wait for the promise of the Father. So I want you to know, immediately Jesus ascended to heaven. The disciples went to the upper room waiting. They were waiting for the promise of the Father. That they will be endued with power. And I want you to know that the New Testament preaching is very simple. Jesus Christ was anointed to preach. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him so that he can do ministry. Now listen, the fact is this foundation is laid and it will not be changed. After we learn all that we learn, we need the impartation of God's grace and spirit upon us. Hallelujah. So it called for waiting, praying, waiting on God that we will be endured with spirit from on high. Hallelujah. It's interesting. Has he got any other method? No. Go to the Bible. Is he going to do a new system? No. Go, to, go in there. Search it. Read it. And he said we are building the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone. What is the foundation? The apostles and prophets. Jesus was the chief cornerstone. And now, when you learn the example and what they did and how he commanded them to wait, then we have no option that to move out to preach, call for waiting on God and then doing what? Praying in the spirit. Because Jesus, the scripture said about Jesus, what he said about Jesus. Hmm. Acts chapter number 10 and then let's take the verse number 38. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of a devil. For God was with him. Now hear this. This gospel must be preached unto the ends of the world. But it must be preached with power. The Holy Spirit is giving Unto the church. And we should wait on the Lord. And pray and believe God. That we will receive some unction to preach the gospel. It is not just standing out there preaching. But preaching with an unction. That will make impact in the lives of people. This is the foundation God has laid. And it will not be changed. Hallelujah. This gospel has power unto salvation. Unto everyone that believes. But the preacher must be filled with a spirit. The preacher might be full of good deeds. Because Jesus said, God have anointed him to preach the gospel. Uh -uh. Luke chapter number 4 and verse 18. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the cover of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now listen, so you see, when we talk about the gospel, we see that the Spirit of the Lord coming upon us, usher us into preaching. Hallelujah. So, if we call on you, brethren, we are discussing our subject is war. Preparation for war. The big catch. And so, we are discussing how to prepare for the unction to come over thee. That the spirit of the Lord will come over you. Because, listen, it is not man's words. It is not by views and opinion. It is not by what your theological standpoint and what you have learned that same people. There is only one name given among us by which men shall be saved. It is Jesus Christ. And he has given us an example in the scripture. He said, God has anointed him. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. So we also want to preach Christ, but we need his unction. The spirit of the Lord must come upon us. We need to see this and then take time and pay the price that there will be some unction upon our life. That our preaching will not be men's word and good, good messages. He, he, but it will be out there healing and delivering people. Getting people saved. And recovering them from the blindness. Hallelujah. Thank God that the Bible said he is the same yesterday, today and forever. I love that scripture. I want you to know that my Jesus is not changing. His systems are not changing. His methods are not changing. They are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I go in there and I see the apostles waiting and praying. So that is one of the keys. Yes. Yeah. Wait on the Lord. Pray and believe him that his spirit shall come over thee. Thou shalt be turned into another, another man. The Spirit of the Lord shall grant thee utterance and boldness to proclaim the good news. Now listen, brethren, if you understand these things, blessed are ye. This is the foundation. And Paul said, for no other foundation can any other man lay than that which is laid. No other foundation. That means we have no other method than what Jesus has done in the Holy Scriptures. So we we'll preach, we we'll organize ourselves because we are a cell church. We want to organize and raise people that they may believe in the preaching of the gospel, that they may trust the Lord with all their heart. Hallelujah. Mm. Good. We bless the name of the Lord. Mm. Thank God. Thank God for Jesus. His method is the same. I want you to know that. His method is what? The same. He is not changing, trying. No, no, no. His systems are not on try error. What he has said and what the scripture has declared will always work. Mm. I want you to know this Bible works. Praise the Lord. The gospel has power unto salvation, unto everyone that believes. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ will be saved. And if the saints will preach the gospel with the ocean of a spirit, people will be saved and delivered. Hallelujah. That's why, brother, I'm calling on you that we, as we follow the example, they waited in the upper room. We need to wait and pray. That is the reason for the 1818. And then you respond momentum. Because we need some momentum, some strength from the law. The ocean of the law coming over us energizing us, causing us, releasing us into ministry. We need it so much. But we need to understand that this kingdom has its own principles and precepts. It's there and it's clear. And we know that the early church, the apostle, when Jesus said they should go, he said wait. And they waited for the 10 days. And when the Holy Ghost come, came upon them, it was super something. We saw the manifestations of grace and God power working in their lives. Hallelujah. That is why I call on you, brethren. You don't have to miss these sessions. Wherever you are, in any of the churches, 
in the praying sessions. We call on you to be part of them. Wait, whether in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in the night, any time scheduled in your area. Please be there and be part of it. Why? Because this is a season where we are waiting on God. We need the unction of a spirit to come upon us that we may be turned into a new people. God's firebrand. We are ready for the action. God's power coming over us. His unction coming because we are obedient like, the, uh, like Peter and Co. Hallelujah. Brother, those who are in the church, those who are praying and those who are fasting and waiting on God, they are the faithful, obedient one like the 120 who were in the upper room. Please, as we do this, what our expectation? Our expectation is simple. We are expecting the unction of the Lord to come over us, that to transform us, because it is the spirit that changes man. The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and thou shalt be turned into another man. As we wait on him, his spirit shall be poured on us in a new measure. Hallelujah. We shall be turned into another man. And now God will anoint us and grant us all trans and boldness that we may stand to preach and proclaim Christ to our generation. And they will hear the word of the Lord and believe with all their heart and be blessed. Hallelujah. I want us also to look at something again. Example from the church. You see, we're looking at them at the upper room. I want you to see the church a prayer meeting. Kabori and the Hata. Let's get to our chapter number four. And please, let's start from the verse number 29. Acts 4 from 29. And now, Lord, behold your threatenings. In fact, in fact, if you read from verse 23, you get the whole story. But now let's take verse number 29. And now, Lord, behold your threatenings and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness that he may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Mm. And when they had prayed, they had prayed, the place was shaking. That where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and, all, and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought, th that ought of the things which he possessed were his own. But they had all things common. Now listen. Let's move on. When you look at the, this prayer... It's very, very interesting. They went for prayer meeting. Go stretch from thy hand and heal. And grant us boldness. That we may preach the gospel. And when they have finished the prayer, the scripture is telling us. The place was shaking. May God grant us this supernatural manifestation. That we will not just go into the meeting, go sleeping. Call sleeping meetings. Call it the New Testament or brethren praying. We want to pray a meeting and we are sleeping. Uh-uh. That is not the type of prayer in the New Testament. They want to pray a meeting and the place was hot. The place was mm -mm, super, super. And the place was shaking. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. May we be filled with the Holy Ghost in our prayer meeting. May the presence of the Lord guide and lead us. May we say the right thing in the presence of the Lord. They pray for boldness. They pray that God will heal the sick. They pray that God will grant them boldness to preach the gospel. May God grant them boldness that in the name of Jesus Christ we will preach the gospel as it, as it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Jesus is the same. Uh -uh, you didn't hear me. I am saying what? Well, Jesus is the same. He has not changed. So if we pray like they prayed, if we preach like they preach, if we believe like they, they believe, the same Jesus who worked miracles years ago will do the same thing now because he is here with us. He has not changed. We can call upon him anytime 
For God, he has promised, I will be with you. Thank God he is with us. He is not abandoned us. He said, I will build my church and he is here with us. As we pray, as we wait on him, and as we look to him, the spirit of the Lord will brood over us. And look to the New Testament church, and the spirit of God came upon them. And the Bible said, greater grace came upon them. My prayer is that greater grace may come upon us. Wherever you are in the closet, wherever you are in the church meeting, wherever your group is praying, in the name of the Lord, and as you wait upon him, like the New Testament church, they are an example. We are following their footsteps. Yes, that is the foundation they have laid. And this is, uh, this is that which we build on. Maria Tikaka, hear me somebody. It is time to follow the steps of the apostle. It is for time to follow their footsteps. How they follow Jesus Christ. And as we read and we study and we follow them. And we believe and do the same thing. Our Jesus have not changed. We will see similar results. Actually Jesus actually have said. We will preach to the ends of the world. And he have also, also said we will do greater works. Greater works than we do. Why? Because he's gone to the Father. Because he has given us his spirit. The Holy Spirit is here to help us. Maria Sibonda Haka. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank God for the promises we have. There's a scripture I love so much. And I'm praying that we will pray that scripture. We will pray and believe God. That his spirit and unction will come over us. And we will see greater things. Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Let's say that scripture. Very interesting. Let's get to Isaiah chapter number 32. 32. And let's take the verse number 15. Mm. If your church has become a dry land, there's a time to be watered. Hallelujah. I've told you before, let me remind you of a story of an Anglican bishop who was in a flight in Iran. He had a toy guard and they were flying through the city, you know, the desert area. And he saw a, a dark place in the midst of a desert. And he asked the tour guard, what is there? What is happening there? And he said, oh, this place, they were expecting and making prospect for oil. They got none. The water came out. So they decided to use the water to water the desert. And now he has turned into a forest. Can forests grow in the midst of a desert? Water the desert land and it will be all. Be a forest. Hallelujah. Are you with me? If your church has become dry, fruitless, you are not seeing serious results, a desire in your heart, there is a place to go. The upper room. As you spend time praying and the Holy Ghost come. Now let's read the scripture. Until the spirit be poured on upon us from on high. And the world and the be a fruit fulfilled. And the fruit fulfilled be counted for a forest. Hallelujah. Come on. So the spirit will be poured upon us from on high. And wilderness be a fruit fulfilled. Hallelujah. It means when the Spirit of the Lord come upon us, as we wait, as we pray, as we fast, as we pray, and as we wait on Him, then the barren land will become fruitful. Why? It shall be watered. Let there be the watering of the Lord. Because He has said, My word shall not return to me void, but it shall be like war, the rain that come from above. As it watered the earth. A minister see to the sower. So shall it be. The truth is this. When the spirit of the Lord is poured from us from on high. Then the, next, the sequence of events is that we will be fruitful. Stop crying and stop seeking God. Stop praying. Start waiting on him. Trust him with your heart. Turn away from your own ways. Repent from every sin. Trust the Lord and let the Spirit of the Lord come over us in a new measure. Yes, 
we shall be fruitful. We shall preach the gospel to the ends of the world. That is a commission given to us. This gospel shall be preached. Thank God you are a part of it. You are the part of the last day preachers. They shall be filled with the spirit. Because they will learn of the apostles. They will learn of Jesus Christ. They will pray to the ocean of the spirit. We will pray in the name of our Lord. We will do like they did. We will behave like they behave. We will believe like they believe. And we have the same result. Because the Savior has not changed. Jesus is the same. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. So if we will learn the examples, mm, there will not be any barren church. Every child should be overflow. It should be full and overflow. Why? The spirit of God will be upon the believers and they will be on the street proclaiming the name of the Lord. Men and women shall be saved. They will flock into the church to be healed and delivered. Yes, that allows their work. And as we do this, the Lord will bless his work and we shall be fruitful. May the watering of the Lord be upon you and may his countenance shine over thee. May the mercies of the Lord be your portion and may he order yourselves and then know that the need of the hour is the unction of a spirit coming over the church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, we need the unction for business. The king's business must be done. It might be done with the unction. It might be done with the outpouring of a spirit. Yes, that is the New Testament example. Thank God. Thank God. Many of, our, many of you are faithful, obeying the truth, and the instructions will give you. We expect great results. We expect we are moving into greater works. We are moving into what God promised us. This gospel must be preached. Hallelujah. Listen. How is it going to be preached? Brother, we need the power of God. We need the ocean of a spirit. As we preach, the testimonies of the law will go far and near. People will carry the story of the gospel from the church to people who have needs. The sick will be healed. People will be delivered. Why? Because the spirit of the law is poured on the church. This is our portion. This is our heritage. Hallelujah. It's important that we understand these things. And as we do it, we'll be blessed. Amen. Ah, hallelujah. The early church prayed. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now they were out there and the place was shaking and the power of God was upon them. Mm. They went to the city, Paul and Co. He said, the people who attend the city upside down have come here. May we become those believers who will turn cities upside down with the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. May, may you be that brother who are a partner that the gospel, which is being preached, the gospel being preached into all the cities as we preach them. Mm. May we turn cities upside down. May people come to believe. And may the churches be full of brothers and new believers. Hallelujah. Mm. So we pray until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. Brother, this is how long do I pray? Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. Uh uh. So do we stop praying? The Bible says men ought to pray and not faint. We pray until the spirit be poured on us. We are not stopping praying. We have begun and we continue praying. Pray without ceasing. Pray. Men ought to pray and not faint. We need to believe and continue praying. Until we be filled with a spirit for exploits. Until we step out there doing the will of God. Prayer must continue. We need to sustain it. Yes, we need to give ourselves to it. So Peter and Cosa said, we will give ourselves to prayer and to ministry of the word. Now listen, brethren, we come to this stage by the grace of God. And there are a lot of things we can do. If only we will follow the New Testament church. If only we will follow the foundation laid for us. 
the foundations of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, asks, and the thing they did, how they believe, how they behave, how they did the thing, and as we follow them, and as we believe like they believe, as we pray like they prayed, as we preach like they preach, as we proclaim the name of the law unto many, many will be saved and healed and delivered. We believe like Jesus. We believe that he is risen. We believe that he's alive forevermore. So we we'll preach Christ and him crucified to the world. And now listen. Whosoever shall call upon this great name shall be saved. I want you to know, brother. Listen. Whosoever. God it had no favorites. Whosoever. Anyone who will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So Peter and co preach it. And today I proclaim that whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus Christ shall be saved. If only you believe with your heart and repent from your sin, you will be saved because he died for the sins of the whole world. And he's not willing that any should perish. He is the savior of the world who offered himself a ransom for our sins. He paid the price with his own blood at the Calvary's cross that we may be healed and delivered and be saved. Thank God for the washing of the blood. Today, the blood of Jesus can cleanse you from every sin and every guilt and every condemnation. The power of spirit can heal your sick body. Yes, because Jesus is the same. He has not changed. I want to be praying with you now. Hear me, somebody. May God's spirit come over thee as you wait in prayer. And may the ocean of the Lord be released over all the churches and all the brethren who sincerely have turned away from their own ways and holding on to these truths and giving themselves to prayer and waiting on God. May the power and the ocean of the Lord be released over thee. Walk in there and do the will of the Lord. May his presence and his countenance shine over you. May God open the heavens and pour upon you a new measure of spirit that we will be filled with a Holy Spirit, a new measure that we may overcome every challenge of our day. Now I bless your name, Lord. I pray for all the brethren, everywhere they are praying. May your grace and mercy be, be released over their life. May the joy of prayer for, and fellowship with the brethren, may it be their portion. May they celebrate and be happy as they go along. And may the unction of the Lord be released upon them for action. We bless you, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Now you have bread. Bread and hear me. You want to give your life to Jesus. Pray this prayer with me wherever you are. Dear Jesus. I come to you just as I am. I believe you died for my sins. And you rose again for me. Dear Lord, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe you died for me and you rose again. You are alive for me today in Jesus' name. You are sick in your body. Hear me. Jesus is in healing business. He is the same doing the same thing as he did before. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lift up any sick person around. To thee, O oh God, those who are watching from afar, may your spirit reach them. Receive your healing now. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, make you whole. The Lord touch your body, overcome every weakness and every infirmity. Jesus Christ set you free from the oppression of the enemy. The Lord set you free from that foul spirit that oppressed thee. Be released from that bondage in the name of Jesus. And now, receive your healing. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank God. You were with us today. May God bless you and may his presence be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for having time with the General Overseer. You can follow Reverend Russell Kobner on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-61-4965. Thank you and God bless you.